um, this talk presentation that you gave, and I'll let you introduce yourself, and you know, you're kind of giving your own little bio there <laughs> before we start, so we'll uh, just get started. Um, Zach left some of his materials. He had a family emergency come up and be here this afternoon, but did some, some materials from MDDC, and we'll let you go ahead and present and share with us all of your... Awesome. Well, thank you so much for having me, and thanks for coming. Um, I do have somewhat of an interesting background, um, just real quick. Like I was saying, I was on unemployment 2005, and you know I was way overweight, smoked, and um, I was a super awesome catch, right? So, um, and then I started making like really, I, I met a girl that kind of changed my life and said, you know, you just got fired, why don't you kind of focus on this stuff, because you seem to know what you're doing. And so, you know, from there I just grew into this big thing that I could go on and on forever. Um, but a big part of that is what I'm going to talk to you today about email marketing and how that evolved into what we do now. So taking everything that we've done, selling other people's products, selling our own products, and now we're into big companies and selling theirs. Okay. So just a little bit more background about me. Um, in 2005 or 2010, I was named by Fast Company the most influential person on the internet, which was kind of a contest that actually came from my email list. Um, Britney Spears was in there and all these other people that they wanted to win, but they don't sell things online, right? So um, in, uh, this was what I was talking about. I built a ringtone site in 2002. By 2005, um, it was making a considerable amount of money. And then from 2005 till 2011, it uh, generated 11 million. It's, it's, the funny thing is I haven't owned the site because I sold it in 2011, but I still have residual income coming in from it. So, um, I, like I said, I sold other people's products for many years. So, I was averaging about $400,000 a month selling other people's products um, back in the day. Um, in 2008, I was nominated by eBay uh, for a presidential award under George Bush uh, with Mark Zuckerberg and a couple other pretty notable people. So notable, I can't really remember their name right off the top of my head. Um, in 2009, uh, I won the Affiliate Summit. Uh, Pinnacle Award, and I also gave the keynote to about 5,000 people there. And um, it was a top five Facebook advertiser spending about $70,000 to $90,000 a day. And then because of that and the success I had with Facebook advertising, I was elected to their board of advisors, specifically the monetary board, as kind of covering the affiliate thing because Facebook was so over their head they didn't understand affiliate marketing, which is you know basically a commission salesperson selling other people's products. Okay. So the title of this is You Don't Know Jack, and, but I do. Um, specifically, my wife knows Jack, and she met Jack in 2007 when she was pregnant with our first child. And we were at a, a conference in San Francisco, and there was a lunch that was sponsored by Jack and some other people, and they were introduced, and Jack happens to own the largest uh, privately held um, baby retailer, adolescent, retailer on the internet and so Jack talked to her a little bit and said you know and she was like oh, I'm shopping for strollers and he said well be careful with this Cadillac ones that are like 500 bucks because they look nice but they suck to take apart and all this and that and you know and he said watch out for this and if Jeremy travels with the kids then you know he's gonna want one that's easily you know used how many times in the airport do you see these women with a child that somebody else has to hold while they disassemble and assemble this monstrosity. So she gave, he gave her value, right? And this is what we kind of end up with. And as you can see, there's me and her at a conference. Um, there's me walking through the Denver airport with our, with our child shortly after that. And because of what he gave us in value, truly made a difference, right? And, and it, was, it was great because we would have bought one of those monstrosities and went through that pain. So like I said, he owns Baby Age, one of the largest retailers. And this turned my wife into a lifelong customer because of the small amount of, the small five minute talk from six years ago. My wife has bought nothing in that space other than from Baby Age, even though it's much cheaper on Amazon. She's not buying from Baby Age, she's buying from Jack, right? She knows Jack. Jack gave her value. He's a good guy, all right? So, but how do you translate that to the internet? Because Obviously, 
you've got a person who visits your website one time, right? And you're spending money to get them there, right? So you're either brand building, you know, you're doing search engine optimization or SEO, you're doing pay-per-click, PPC through Google or any of those search engines. Probably putting out some press releases, doing offline advertising, um, and just the resources that you spent to build your website. You probably got a web developer, you spent an enormous amount of money developing the site, you've got all this stuff there, and just other general expenses. But you know, studies show consistently that from retailers that you know a consumer interacts with a brand or service, you know, up to a dozen times before they make a buying decision. Okay? Because, you know, People are shoppers on the internet. They want to read reviews. They want to go here. They want to see this stuff. So you spent money to get them there, right? And I'm just going to use Acme Widgets as a, as a demo company. But these all have huge competitors, huge competitors. So you spent money to get them there. But by the time they come back to buy, how do you know that they're going to come back and buy from you? So you spend money to get them there. and Really, are you just making money for your competition? Because a person came in, maybe they read all this stuff on your site and read about some tips or something, and then by the time they were interested in, they went to Google and they typed in baby strollers, another Google ad popped up, they went to that site and bought it. But you're the one that gave them value, right? You're the one that got them interested. And they came to you because they were interested in your product or service. So how do we do this? How do we take that one-time website visitor and turn them into a lifelong customer? And we do that by capturing their email when they come to the website. And we can do this through many ways. We've got about over 30 clients now. And it's, it's remarkable all the different ways they do it. And I'm going to go through some of those ways here. So some people think they're too good to do this. Like some companies are like, that's too intrusive. I don't want to have a pop-up window. When the person leaves my page, I don't want something to pop up. I don't want to do a contest. I don't want to do this. I mean, it's just going to be annoying to my users. Well, it's not too good for the President of the United States. And if you noticed last November, if you were to go to whitehouse.gov, this is what you would see before you could get to whitehouse.gov. Couldn't even get there without seeing this page where you collected your email address. Now, you can see there at the very bottom, it says, no thanks. I want to actually go to whitehouse.gov. Right? But he did an excellent job. And what he did through the series is exactly what I'm going to talk about. Here's how BabyAge does it. When you go to leave the website, it has a layover. It's not like a pop-up, you know, like an annoying one. It just kind of dims the screen and it presents this. And it says, hey, you know, you're on your way out, right? So it doesn't, we like this one a lot because it doesn't impede the buying process. A person still goes through, they can still purchase. It's only when they're going to leave that this is presented. And this gets an, a great, great response. Um, a quick tip that I think I have later in the presentation is we see a, a much bigger response when you give a dollar value versus a percent. Because if people say get 10% off coupon, then they're like, it's an extra step they have to think about. Well, what's 10% off? What's that? Even when they get the coupon, you know, they're, they got to calculate that out. So, you know, just a dollar value people can quantify immediately. Um, one of our clients is uh, Laurel, who is the third largest tobacco company in the world. Um, we work specifically with their electronic cigarette division, which is blue. We started working with them before they were acquired by Laurel. But this is how they do it. They have a, a pop-up window initially when you go there. It comes up, it asks for your email to get special deals and stuff like that. So okay, now we've captured the email address. What do we do? Well, we want to go back to what Jack did. right? We want to build a relationship with those customers. And we can do this, the beautiful thing about it, is we do it fully automated. Okay? So we capture them, and we introduce ourselves. You know, Hi, this is Jack. I want to personally welcome you to our newsletter. And here's, what, you know, here's how I started Baby Age. Some more stuff. Just don't try to sell them anything. Just talk to them like they're a regular person. And because people really identify with people, not company names. When I get an email from Dell, it goes right to my trash. When I get an email from Jason at Dell, 
I open it because he's like, hey, Jeremy, just want to let you know, I've got a discount on these servers. I know you bought a bunch before, you know, and I'm much more likely to at least read it, even if I don't take action. So when you think of Facebook, you know, Zuckerberg, Facebook, you know, pretty much hand in hand. You know, you think of Apple, Steve Jobs, when you buy an Apple product, rest in peace, but you're, you know, it's from Steve. And when you see him present on stage, it's amazing. And that's the reason why they do so well is because of his persona. Now we'll see how that does now that he's gone. But, you know, they've obviously dived, you know, in stock since he passed away and stuff. Personally, I attribute that to their product launches. It's just not him. You know, he's, he's the guy. Here's a funny thing that you guys, you girls are too young for, probably you guys as well, is Dave Lennox was, Lennox Heating and Air Conditioning was forever the biggest retailer internationally of air conditioning and other appliances, okay? Why is this important? Funny thing is, he never existed, right? They just made this guy up because they thought, we gotta have a person behind this company. We can't just be Lennox Heating Air, we gotta be Dave Lennox, which was his name. All right. So again, like I said, you just talk to people like they're normal human beings. If you notice like when Steve Jobs presents, Mark Zuckerberg, has he ever told you to sign up for Facebook, right? I mean, I mean he doesn't get out much, right? He's pretty much a recluse. But when you see him talk at places, he never says go sign up for Facebook. He just talks to you and he talks about kind of what he's been through, where he came from, why he does what he does. And people relate to that. You know, oftentimes when Steve Jobs presents, he doesn't necessarily talk about what Apple stuff does. What he does is he talks about what the other guys do. I don't know, and again, you guys are too young for this, but in 1984, during the Super Bowl, when Apple launched Macintosh, I almost get emotional about it because it was such an amazing moment. <laughs> but if you saw that commercial, it was targeted towards IBM. And it was like, break free from the corporate rat race trap. Think differently, Apple. And it, it was just an amazing, really a game changer. Right? I'm not big on that word, but you guys should look up the commercial because, and then think about that time. It was, it was crazy. And it really, like, like I said, he didn't at once say Apple's better than them, right? It lets the consumer actually just assume that. Like, wow, they're not these guys without saying that. So again, you give people value through these emails. You can point to social proof, right? So it's like, hey, I just got an email from so-and-so. It says this, you know, Jack, I'm so happy with the stroller, blah, blah, blah. You know, can you give me some other pointers? And that gives you an opportunity to kind of stand on a podium, answer that question. But it does two things. One, you get to point out people are buying their stuff. And two, you get to give more value, right, and educate people. You want to talk about what makes you different. And for Blue Electronic Cigarettes, this was a huge thing because they are way more expensive than any of their competitors, as much as two to three times as much. So they need a pretty compelling story about why would you buy from them when there's so much more money. Again, because people are going there, they spend a huge amount of money on advertising. I mean, they, they own a freaking NASCAR, right? They do, because they can't advertise like normal stuff, you know, because they're in the tobacco field. So, but they get so much traffic. But again, how do they know that one-time web website visitor is going to do that? So that's what we did for them. Um, you know, how did your company start? Why do you do what you do? When clients come to us with a PAR program, I ask them questions. I just say, tell me what you do. Why do you do it? Do you have any, have you been in the press? You know, have you done this? Tell me, if someone was to see, this is my favorite question, if someone was to see if I was walking with you and you had on your company shirt with your logo and somebody came up to us and said, I know that company, they do X, what would you want them to say? And how do you say that on a one-time website visitor? That's what we do. We want the customer to walk away with that. And again, we fully automate this, right? So here's what you don't do. And I'm sure you guys are going to experience some of these. Like I said, you never send from the company name right? When you get email, and we see this everywhere, when you get emails from the company name, you know it's just an offer of some sort. Now sometimes you want those offers, like Groupon, maybe you're into that, right? But if it's, you know, something else, something that you haven't purchased from before, interacted with, you're much more likely just to trash them, because it's just, you just consider it spam. So they also will just 
spam you with specials. I kind of use spam in a word a lot, but you know they'll offer you specials, let's just say that. And it's just a constant special sale, special sale. We got this for sale. There's no personalization to that at all. You're just another customer to them. It's not John reaching out to you or Jack reaching out to you. They also use full image emails, and this is something I'm going to um, dive into a little more. So here's a great example of an email I get, and I'm sure you guys use Gmail or whatever. You get these too, right? What the heck is this, right? First of all, it comes from Birchbox. It says shop at birchbox.com. That's, that's really personal, right? And then you've got these two images, all right? That doesn't work well. Um, but here's what it looks like when you actually click enable images, all right? Here's another example of, you know, another one. I can show you examples all day of ones that we get. So these are some really interesting statistics. And like I said, this is, this is what I do for a living now. Um, these are stats from March to June. We've seen over $50 million in e-commerce for our clients come through our system. So we have so much data. I mean, I'm putting out infographics now that are just crazy. Um, but basically, this is from 17 different e-commerce e clients who anonymously contributed their data. So continuing on with that email only thing, what we've seen is less than 60% of those images people actually ever enable from desktop clients. Now, some people are like, well, what about mobile? Well, there was just a study out that mobile gets 10 times the open rate, 10 times less clicks. And that's because mobile phones automatically fire images, right? So it's very misleading. Um, this is a true statistic uh, and one that's very quantified. Emails with mostly images have a 15% higher marked spam. Now this crushes a company because the more this happens, the more it sends a signal to Gmail, this is spam, pff, goodbye. You know, those emails are now gonna go to spam. And I look at my spam folder and it cracks me up. All these major billion dollar companies, multi-million dollar companies all go into my spam folder because they do exactly this, right? All they do is pitch, pitch, pitch. Email sent with mostly image content have a 10% unsubscribe rate. So now those are 10% of the people more you just lost as a potential either new customer coming in or a customer you can reach out to to make future purchases. And also email images you know, that are mostly images are clicked on 30% less, even, even blank ones. People just don't click, they get rid of them. And these, again, this is all quantified statistics. It's not theories or some study some other person did surveying people. This is what we see from our data. Now, let's talk about a real life example, okay? If I've got a booth, and this was actually my booth that you'll see in a second. And if I had a booth that had a blank thing, much like those images just came through to you, that are completely blank, just blank squares, and I spent the amount of money on this just like I spent money on my website, and let's say the whole thing is whited out. You don't see me, you don't see what I do, you don't see anything unless you click a special thing up here that says, see what we do, enable images and Jeremy to talk to me, all right? So when you click that, here's what you see, right? And now you're gonna see me standing behind there, but you're gonna see, like, here's our branding, here's what we do, you know, here's our testimonials over here, and even someone that just walks by the booth not actually talking to me can see what we do, right? But again, you see this, this is what people are emailing out now, completely blank. You've gotta put another step ahead to actually get them to open images. So what we do is we advise our clients to drastically, drastically um, not send images. You know, just talk to them, send a text email, because again, it's more personalized. You know, who, who emails their friend with a text image? that says, you know, hey, come, let's go out this weekend in an image that doesn't load. Nobody does. So it's just like somewhere along the lines, these companies have thought it's this great idea to just mass email with blank images from their company name and, and they've lost the whole thing of how do you talk, why don't you talk to them like they just came up to you and asked you questions? Like what happened there? Why did you all of a sudden think you lose that and you just do nothing but they come in your office and you're like, hey, 
here's a sale, here's a sale. I don't even care what your name is. I'm, you know, shoe money, I'm not Jeremy Shoemaker, you know. So, all right, so here's what the booth looks like again with that. All right, so step three, because we've, we've captured them, we've got them in there. So now we set up an auto, what's called an autoresponder series. And depending on the how, you, you can segment this out. I could go into this all day. But basically, you can segment these users out by product they're interested in, by page they visited, you know, if they came in through various sources. And then you can start to send them a series of emails and stuff like this. And I kind of am going over. I know there's a lot broader picture to this. And that's, I hope you guys ask specific questions, because I can really dive into this more based on what you have interest in. So this is just a case study from couple of our clients, just on how effective this is. Um, Blue Electronic Cigarettes, um, when we first started with them, they were about a $20 million company. Um, we started capturing people that came to their website in 2011. Um, within a couple months, they had a 28% in overall sales, 20% of those coming directly from the email links in our email. Um, like I said, they're way more expensive than their competitors. And, sorry about that. And after we did this for several months, they had a database that we played a huge part in there. They sold for $185 million. We played a huge role in that because Big Tobacco doesn't have a database of people interested in cigarette products. We had half a million people that they had captured. And they said, gosh, if we wouldn't have done that, our valuation would have been $50 million less because this, they worked with us consistently, the company that purchased them, that got the data on all the peeps, we, people we had captured. Mr. Goodsense, who, I think there's some franchises. Well, I know in Lincoln. I was thinking I was in Omaha all of a sudden for some reason. Um, Mr. Goodsense, local place, we started working with them. Um, they've got four franchise locations. And when we started working with them, they were ranked like 90th in the world, 80th, whatever. The 70th in, um, Pioneer was ranked the highest, I think it was like 65 in the world out of like 800 some franchises. Um, so we implemented that in 2011. By January 1, they had doubled their revenue um, and they became the number one highest grossing store in the world, right? So another case study that we did is with Top Velocity who sells DVDs about how to throw a faster fastball. Pretty simple. Um, like I said, people go there, though, because they want information. But they don't always buy, right? So we capture that information. He gives them some bonus report or something like that. And then he starts to give his background. He played in the major leagues. You know, he's got all this credibility. And then he goes to sell you eventually, which we'll cover that process a little bit. Um, so he sells a DVD training package. We implemented this in 2012. Within only two months, um, the first two months, he gained over 812 new customers and grew the company by over 10 times. Um, one of the things I showed you earlier was a company I previously owned called Shoe Money Tools. And um, Shoe Money Tools was a set of pay-per-click internet marketing tools. When you went there, it had, you know, sign up for it, and it was like $200. And what I did was it had such a low conversion rate. People would go there one time and never see them again. This is when this actually was the first time that this clicked on how effective just capturing their stuff was. And so what I did was instead of, you couldn't see any pricing on the site. It just said, enter your name and email and click to get started. So for all people knew, it was free, right? So once you filled out that initial thing, it then took you to the pricing page. And then you just would click to buy. So the, an interesting stat on that is about, then I would start that funnel, building my credibility, what I've done, give little video case studies on people who've used it. And then I would go for sales and like 80% of those people came in through that channel. It was huge. It was a difference of like $400,000 a year in revenue. I mean, this company was, you know, so it did, it did really well. I ended up dis disabling that company and then selling off parts of the technology behind it. Um, so the, the, there's a huge case study on Top Velocity. And um, I don't know if you guys will email this out to people or not, but I can include this. And uh, if you want to read more about the actual case study. Funny thing about the case study is I talked to Brent, who's, who owns the site, and I said, dude, you're crushing this. You know, like, can I do a case study about you? And 
I said, you know, we'll, we'll pump it out, press releases and all this and that. He was like, absolutely. So we got, he gave us so much data. I couldn't believe like his e-commerce data. I was like, wow, you really want to share all that. And so the funny thing is it, it comes out. I didn't alert him when it was going to come out. It comes out. Second day after that, he calls me and he's like, you put out that press release? And I was like, yeah, is that okay? You know? And he was like, dude, I did more sales in two days from that press release than I've done in the last month. And he's like, you need to do a case study about the case study. <laughs> you know, and I was like, so that was really, really just a side note, interesting thing. Um, okay, and so like I said, I've been doing this. I have a blog at shoemoney.com. I started it way back in 2003 when not a person read it. And as I started to become Google's poster child, you know, for all this and traveling around speaking, and I've done, I spoke at probably 60 some conferences by now um, about, about any topic. And I started to develop a following, but I gave people value was the most important thing, just like what we do for our clients. So I'm just gonna show you, and I build an email list. If you go to shoemoney.com, you're gonna be presented with, I'm gonna give you a bunch of crazy stuff if you sign up for my newsletter. And I do, and I, and I always joke around. I know that every person that signs up for my newsletter, the lifetime value is gonna be worth $87 to me. Every person. If you guys go there, I can chalk up another 87 bucks, whether or not you buy something. But you, you probably will buy something, I'm just, just saying. Because, and the reason is, is I give you so much value, I establish myself as so credible that when I sell you something for a couple thousand bucks or 10 bucks, it's what we call the boomerang effect. And you're like, you don't really even care what I'm selling, you're just like, man, I owe this guy. It's given us so much value that I've been able to implement, right? And we see it constantly. I mean, we see this constantly. And every time I give a talk, I always say, test me. Go see what I do. I guarantee I'll see you buy something from me. And anyway, it's funny because I do see people do it. So here's what I do with that list. After I build credibility with them, great. So we got people on our list. We built credibility with them. But we really care about making money. That's the whole goal of this thing. Well, eventually, you can do what we call, well, you eventually you can start promoting stuff. You can have a sale, right? And then we're going to talk about different ways to promote that. But I'm going to show specifically my list from one year in 2010 um, when I was still doing hardcore affiliate marketing. So there was a product called Video Boss. It was a really awesome product. And it taught you how to make videos that sell. Um, from that, I sent three emails. I did two blog posts. And I profited $23,000 from just that. Um, this was another product, you know, a couple emails, a blog post, 42,000. This is all in 2010. Um, another product came out, and, and these are, you know, spaced out between three months or so. I wouldn't spam my users with stuff. But these are only users who had gone through 60 days worth of me giving them value and building that trust relationship and stuff like that. And again, this is other people's stuff. This isn't my stuff. I'm just getting a thousand bucks. They're selling it for 2,500, and I get a thousand bucks for every one I sell. Okay, I'm just basically a commission salesperson for the most part. Um, outsource for us was how to outsource people. You know, and and honestly, these are things that my people care about because who doesn't want to know about outsourcing and the best way to do it and video walkthroughs to teach you how to do it. These are excellent products. Um, so I made. 29 grand on that. Now this one is one I completely knocked out of the park because my audience is into affiliate marketing. Okay, so this one is affiliate. I sent five emails. I did $142,000 in profit. And because I outsold the top 10, the guy who ran it bought me a $60,000 X5. So here's me happy with my X5 that he bought for me. So just to recap, talking about $361,000 from a blog right, of a list of a couple years that I, I didn't even have a newsletter signed up until I started to see the value, until about two or three years ago. And all I do is just share with people what I learn, and that's it. I don't hardly ever sell anything, well, except when I sell that stuff. But even when I sell that stuff, I don't say go buy this. I say like, you know, one of the problems I had, you know, was doing video stuff, my friends launching this product, He's putting out free videos now, but I'm just going to warn you, the videos are awesome, but, and sometimes they're even better than the content, but you know, blah, 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 and you just kind of lead them into it, right? It's not a hard sell, and it's easy because it's, they know you, you're just talking to them, and I even say, like, look, it's a $2,000 investment, and if you don't have that kind of extra cash, stay away from it, you know, and, and just stuff like that, and sometimes I'm like, you know, my product, well, this is digressing a little bit, but 
basically when I started my info product, which is what these are called, like training products, were books on how to write PHP. That's how I started my first site, right? So you don't have to spend two grand. You can spend, you know, whatever at Barnes & Noble. Okay. So this is one last thing, but I'm going to get into these a lot. Um, so a big thing that you want to be careful about in your messages, a big thing is what you don't say, okay? You always want to shape the consumer's perception and conclusion that they get from what you say. So I'll give you a couple examples. Um, let's say that you're having a sale, right? So you're like, hey everybody, we're having a sale. It's $10 off of product X, like blue electronic cigarettes. It's $10 off of a starter kit, and it's one they just went to. So you didn't give them a reason why you're doing it, right? So people can draw three conclusions, right, My, from the little focus group we did. Um, the biggest one is that the product's not selling well, right? The second one is that it's defective or that it's about to be discontinued. There's something wrong here, right? Why would they do this? And the third one is, is like, oh, hey, it's just a discount. I'm going to go buy it. Now, okay, so you got like two, two pretty bad ones there that aren't going to drive people to go buy and might even say negative going forward about, man, this company, not really, you know, they're just spamming me with this. But when you, now, how do you do that? This is how I do it, is I say, hey, in honor of my book being number one bestseller for 12 weeks in a row internationally on Amazon and selling over 100,000 copies and being in libraries and you would think I would have turned off my ringer after the first time. Um, but basically, I'm going to have a sale because we're celebrating here, right? And so I'm going to give you X amount off of, I'm going to give you this crazy deal and here it is. And again, this is fully automated down the line. It's just a cash machine, it just runs. So what do people take away from that? What conclusions do they draw? They're like, first of all, Jeremy Shoemaker's awesome because he sold a book that's sold 100,000 copies, number one, whatever. So I just established more credibility, right? And why you should buy from me. And the second thing is, I'm giving you a great deal that makes sense because I just talked about why I'm doing it. Okay, so you never want to leave something up to the actual consumer to say, oh. Now, there's other ways you can shape that. You can talk about what I like to call the enemy, <laughs> okay? So if you're blue electronic cigarettes, okay? For example, I like to use them a lot. Um, you can talk about what those guys do. Like, you know, hey, just be careful out there because the FDA is not regulating international electronic cigarettes companies and 99% of them are made in China. And basically what they're selling you is Chinese bathwater. Okay, now what does that leave the consumer to draw? Without saying anything, they're saying, oh, you don't do that, right? Super powerful. When you let the consumer draw their own conclusion, you can kind of shape it a bit. You can say, hey, watch out for those guys. You know, some of them are overheating and people are getting hurt. Look, look at this news article I read the other day. Oh my gosh, you know, and Julie just sent this in to me. You know, whatever, I mean, you need to, I mean, I'm not saying, well, whatever. I was gonna say, you know, whether or not Julie said that, but don't let the facts get in the way of a good story. Um, but anyway, you get my point, right? There's something you can point to, right? I was joking about that, kind of. Um, all right, so because like I said, it can have a, the way you say things can have a, if you just talk about you and what you do and what you do and what you do, okay, great. But people take away when you talk about what you don't do. And it's kind of like, you know, if, well, I was gonna give you some formula like A plus B equals C, but I don't know exactly how that applies, but that would sound cool if I could figure that out. Um, but that's basically it, right? So just to drive that point home, and it's a super powerful point, is that if you're going to send emails, no matter if they're salesy or whatever, make sure you have a reason and tell the consumer why you're doing it. Or, make, or just survey people and don't survey anyone who works in the office because you guys are not your consumers, okay? Because what you want to hear is you want to hear real feedback. Like, what do you take away from this? Like, why do you think I'm doing this? Right, and, and you'll get great feedback. Some, a big thing we like to do, here's a huge trick that we do. And I don't talk about it here, but we do acquisition and retention. So we acquire the customer, give them value added stuff, but then on the retention side, we continue that relationship to turn them into lifelong customers. Same kind of automated sequence. You know, if you look at what Amazon does when you buy something, what do they do? They ask for your feedback, right? And what does that do? It tells you that they care, right? What we do, we take a little bit different approach because we personalize it more. 
And for instance, with blue electronic cigarettes, this is a fascinating case study that they don't really want me to publicly talk about. But um, in here, I don't think you guys are going to tell them. So basically, what we do is as soon as somebody buys something, we thank them for their purchase. And we say, you know, if you wouldn't mind my favorite line in the world, um, we value your feedback more than your money, right? So if you wouldn't mind taking the survey and give us five minutes of your time, we're going to give you something really cool, right? So what happens is, is, so people just bought, and by the way, like these companies have enormous margins. So even at, so then they instantly get a coupon for, I think it's like a free month of their monthly subscription. So it like enrolls them in the monthly subscription, they get a free, whatever, even if it's six months. People don't cancel those things, they run it forever, right? So, so yeah, so basically what we see is like 40% of people come back and make another purchase because they're just like, it's that same boomerang effect. Well, it's actually the, the different effect of where I feel like I just did work, I deserve something, right? So now I'm gonna get the payoff. You know, I just did this for you, now you're gonna give me something. And it makes sense, again, it makes sense to the consumer why they should go fill out. Plus, let's look at the fact, we actually just got great feedback from our consumer. How was their checkout experience? Is there anything we can do better? And two favorite things I like to do also is, tell us something bad we did. And I make that a requirement, like you have to do it. And then the next thing is, tell me something great we did. And so the best part about that is, again, kind of a psychological thing, is that people, if they tell you something bad, they want to say something really good because they want to really offset that. And then you can, you have a little disclaimer that you can use this for promotional things. Then you can take what they said and use that on your site as a testimonial. Like when Susie went through our thing, it was the greatest checkout process. I love you guys. You have great support, blah, 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 blah. Beautiful, right? We accomplished so many things in that thing. We get more sales, we get great feedback, and we get testimonials all from one little freaking thing, all right? We also, like I said, you want to tell people what you're selling, use small focus groups and get their feedback. Like I said, talk to your friends, show them what you're selling. Um, actually, Anna back there was my living nanny before she worked with me. And I would go down there with her and I'd make her watch a sales video. <laughs> and I would be like, what do you think? And if she would be like, I'm going to go buy it. Because she is my consumer at that point. She's not an internet wizard. She doesn't make money on the internet. You know? And so if she's compelled to buy it, then I know I'm in the right spot. Okay. Well, I'm going to open it up to questions. Um, you guys, if you have any questions in the future, um, feel free to email me or, you know, about anything. So. Do you still have a connection with Google at all? Or what, what happens then? Or? It happens. It's a trend with every company. Um, they use you as much as they can, and then they won't answer the phone. So. I do have relationships with, and the thing is they have such a high turnover rate because in Silicon Valley, it's like six months. People, people run around every six months, right? They're jumping jobs like crazy. The interesting thing is when I was with auction ads or when I was with eBay doing all their stuff, people that worked there went to Facebook, right? And so the reason I got in on Facebook and was on you know, that cutting edge of that was because those guys went to there, reached out to me, then I became Facebook's poster child because I'm the largest advertiser in the world on their network and I get to talk about how I made all this money with it and now they won't answer the phone either, right? In fact, I'm actually banned from using Facebook advertising, this is a funny thing, because of a campaign I ran three years ago which they made for me. And I can't, I mean they just, now they've outsourced all of their, all that stuff. I can't get a hold of anyone there. And everyone I knew there has left. And they've gone to now, you know, they've gone to Groupon or they've gone to Pinterest or whatever. And, you know, they've gone on. So do I still have connections there? I know a lot of engineers there, um, which are, they keep the engineers very separate. Google is very, very segmented. You know, they've got the electronic cars that drive themselves division. They've got the hot air balloons that are giving Wi-Fi all over the world thing. They've got the Google glasses, if you've seen those anyway. They're super, super, super segmented, and they keep the advertising people. Um, if you ever want to read anything interesting, I actually sued a, an AdWords employee for reasons I can't disclose, but it, the case is very public. It was in the Wall Street Journal. It was covered very, very widely, and if you guys care to read that, it's a very interesting thing. But yeah, to answer your question, no. Um, like specifically in advertising and AdWords. Um, and this is the thing, like I have so many interviews, like I, 
help these companies. I don't want to say I made Google's business because I definitely didn't, but they get, a lot of people don't know this, they get 99% of their revenue from people like me who have their advertising products. A lot of people think, oh, they sell this, they sell this. No, they make all that money from advertisements on the search engine or on people's websites. Next question, anyone have a question? Yes, ma'am. Sure, and that's a great question. Um, so what we do with our stuff um, on the inside is we actually have a user engagement um, rating, and we actually have like a per email engagement rating. And so we actually measure like at what point did we lose people? And specifically to you, it sounds like you have two problems. One is like actually initially acquiring that person, but then the second one is getting them to come back and do what you want. Does that sound right? Yeah. Yeah. And that really relates to share it, you know, to right. get that information to other people. And I mm -hmm. want them to come into our office for more information. Right. And so the the really interesting about our platform is it will actually like we have amazing technology that I don't want to get into too much. But we can just from an email, we'll know their Facebook, Twitter, everything just from an email, LinkedIn, whatever. You can instantly follow them on Twitter. Um, and just an interesting fact, if a if a person follows your company on Twitter, they're worth 20% more lifetime dollar value than someone that doesn't. So that's why one of our services is pretty sweet. Um, but yeah, I mean, like reaching out, there's a way to do it. I think that's the thing you want to go back to, is how do you have a conversation with them to get them to do what you want? And now, I've got 11 years of experience of doing this, but, you know, really, like, that's just it. It's just reaching out to them from a, I mean, do you guys do it from the college? Do you do it from, like, the community manager who's actually going to answer that email? I mean the actual email. Yeah. yeah, I would. I mean, I would like. You need a face on there. Um, it, it's just. It's so much. No matter what business you're in, even nonprofits. We've got a nonprofit. You know, which you wouldn't think a lot of these e-commerce things would apply. It works everywhere. You know, when you can relate to the person and it's a regular person, especially if they're a student or if they have been a student, because now, much like the other people we talked about, they're relating because they're like, hey, you know. I know people like us, you know, and you know we're in this together kind of thing. And you know, here's one thing I liked is that the the college does is they do, and I already forgot what you're talking, about, what you wanted to do. But but what I'm saying is like you know you can be like one of the things I really love about what we're doing is we're doing this, and you can do this by just going here and doing it. I thought it was really cool. I love the experience, and I'd love your feedback. If you just want to email me back and let me know what you think, like that's totally not intrusive. Do you see what I'm saying? Totally didn't answer what you were asking. Oh, well, I just, I'm just no, it's okay. About, I'm just giving. Um, just like you were saying about losing them halfway through, you know, what, how much? How much information is too much? Or how much is a customer going to consume? Um, mm -hmm. They don't want to read a, a block of text, and we know that. So we are trying to limit the information, but I'm wondering if there are things that are, you know, we should leave out. So I think you did come up. You mentioned some really great points about what not to say. Yeah. So What, give me an example of something you want people to do. So we want, we want to make sure that they have the latest updates, but we don't want to inundate them. Um, our ultimate goal is for them to interact with us in different ways. So either coming into our office, using our website, or using our social media. Got it. So um, the big thing is right off the bat establishing credibility and